This is possibly the best looking OEM conversion that I've ever done before. I know I've said that with my other sub $200 OEM since we started doing the wood grain front panels, but when you combine that with this color scheme, I don't think it gets any better. Today I'm going to walk you through how I purchased this $70 office computer from eBay, how I upgraded both the performance and aesthetics, and then of course we're going to benchmark it. Don't think of this video as a step-by-step -step guide where you have to follow each individual product though. Instead, I'll explain what to look for so you'll have enough information information to do this for yourself, even if the components that I used are out of stock. So with that being said, the number one fundamental for these OEM conversion builds is buying a good starting point. This here is an HP ProDesk 600 G4 MT, and it came included with an Intel i5-8600, 8 gigs of DDR4 RAM, and no storage. The exact brand and model of the OEM isn't nearly as important as the specs that come inside of it. This one I'm actually using goes against what I usually look for, but since Nemes in the ZTT Discord server found this for me for only 70 bucks, I had to pull the trigger. In an ideal scenario for OEMs, I look for the following items. Make sure it has an Intel i5 or i7. I prefer eighth generation as the absolute oldest here in 2024 going into 2025. Also make sure it has 16 gigs of RAM, but eight will do. And then having an NVMe SSD pre-installed would be preferable as well. What's also preferable is today's video sponsor, GVG Mall. I know you've heard me say this a bunch of times already, but the reason GVG Mall keeps sponsoring these videos is because a bunch of you guys and I keep buying their keys. It's plain and simple. They have the best prices on Microsoft Office keys, other software, games, and even some console stuff as well. More importantly though, is that they have the gold mine for cheap Windows activation keys and the process couldn't be any easier. Now, these prices on their website look great already, but the true magic is when you use code ZTT18 because that'll give you a beefy 25% discount. They'll then instantly send you the key, you paste that into your Windows activation setting, and then boom, you get full access to Windows, you remove that nasty watermark, and you'll get every update that's available. I wouldn't be showing this to you if it didn't work, so head on down in the description and use code ZTT18 if you need to pick up a key for way cheaper than the normal price. All right, so getting back to the build, my HP ProDesk 600 G4 didn't include the 16 gigs of RAM like I wanted to or any storage. This is fine if it comes in around this super low price tag, but if you're paying over like $100, then it definitely should. Every gaming PC being built these days, no matter the price, should have 16 gigs of RAM at a minimum, so when it only includes a single 8 gigabyte stick, you'll have to buy and throw another another one in there like I did. You can usually find these for about 10 bucks, so it's not that big of a deal. Just search for one by eight gigabyte DDR4 on eBay, but if you're trying to keep things simple, just buy an OEM that has the 16 gigs. For the storage, I'd also recommend getting one with an NVMe SSD installed, not just because of the SSD itself, but because it'll tell you that the motherboard has an NVMe port on it. It's honestly a little tricky trying to look up all these OEM model names to figure out which ones have and don't have NVMe support. So if you buy one that has one included, you'll know that you're good to go for an upgrade. For models like this that don't have it, I'll instead have to use a one terabyte 2.5 inch SATA drive and it'll be a bit slower, but it's still good enough for a budget gaming PC. I definitely don't recommend trying to copy this Team Group Delta Max model because it's a little expensive. You can find way more budget options that'll still work perfectly fine around the $30 mark. So once the CPU, RAM, and storage are all taken care of, the only other performance part you'll need is a GPU, and this is definitely the most complex part of the process. If you buy one of those slim tower OEMs, then you'll be limited to just low profile GPUs, and you'll also have to keep an eye out for where the PCIe slot is on the motherboard. Sometimes that slot is directly above the power supply, so you'll need to buy both a low profile and a single slot graphics card. That's about as limiting as it gets. And remember that these eBay listings don't always show you this type of information. For this ProDesk 600 G4, it was a mid tower, so it could take full size desktop graphics cards, and that's definitely what I prefer. But with this metal opening system, I found a new limitation that I didn't even know existed. I originally tried to throw in there a single fan RX 6500 XT because I had one laying around, but when I tried to close it, this metal bracket covered the GPU power connector port, so I wouldn't have been able to plug that in. Now, in theory, you could just Dremel that out if you want to take the time to do that and have the skills for it, but I have a feeling that most of you won't. So instead, I decided to use this EVGA GTX 1060 that's roughly about the same size as the 6500 XT, but the power connector is in a different position that will work for this metal frame. This is only a three gigabyte ITX model, so it's not packing a lot of heat, but it allows us to stay closer to the $150 total build price, so I don't think we should really complain. The most ideal GPU would be something like a GTX 1650 that doesn't require external power, and there's also an Intel A580 and even a 6400. For GPUs, it's not only about the size though, as you'll also have to factor in the power supply. These OEM builds will usually come with a pretty decent and usually gold rated unit, but the wattage is always super low, and most of them don't come with a six pin or six plus two pin connector. Again, it's hard to find out this information before 
before you purchase water. First, you'll wanna make sure that you have enough wattage, and then you'll also wanna buy a power adapter if you need it. If I ever do that, which I had to do in this build, I always like going with the dual SATA to six plus twos like this one from Axe Gear because it's a little bit safer. These are on Amazon for about six bucks though, so make sure you factor that into your pricing. And speaking of which, I have a feeling that most people interested in keeping your price around 150 bucks for a PC probably aren't all that concerned with aesthetics, but that's of course what I like to focus on, so I'll quickly explain what I did. After we blew out all the dust and cleaned up the build a little bit, I painted with this satin moss green paint on the side panel, and I think this turned out amazing. I always like to use these Rust-Oleum 2X paint and primers, and I typically do around five to eight coats depending on the weather and what I'm painting. It's super cold here in Pittsburgh right now, so I waited a full 15 minutes before each coat, and all of them were really light, so the paint didn't run. The reason I chose this color is because I was trying to match the green and wood green theme of my wife's Fractal Design Terra build, and honestly, I think we got as close to that as it gets. Green and wood green is definitely a very trendy color combination right now, even outside the world of PC building, and I'm already mentally preparing for more builds to mimic this as well. For the front panel, my wife has been on her game lately with the Cricut machine, and she just measures out where all the ports go with digital calipers and then prints it out. You can buy these sheets of wood grain vinyl on Amazon for just a couple of bucks, and when you nail down those dimensions, it comes out looking sick. All in all, here's what the final parts list is looking like, and I'm not gonna add the aesthetic part pricing because I doubt most or any of you will actually copy that. In total, this is just a $156 gaming PC, which is actually pretty crazy. I'm sure you're interested in what it's capable of, so let's run some benchmarks to see what we're working with. I'm gonna show you some games here so you know what I'm talking about, and here's Apex Legends running at 1080p with low settings and getting a pretty respectable 112 average FPS. Obviously, the graphics don't look amazing, but for a $150 gaming PC, I think most people would be happy with this level of performance. Same thing with Fortnite, because in 1080p with pro settings, we're right up there at 120 FPS, so a higher refresh rate 1080p monitor would still work great with this budget of a system. Now, the downfall of a 3 gigabyte GTX 1060, though, is the more demanding games like Hogwarts Legacy. Here in 1080p low, we're not able to get up to that 60 FPS mark, and for a lot of you, that's still not a deal breaker, but I just wanted you to see this so you know what it looks like. Same thing with Cyberpunk, because here we only got 41 FPS in 1080p low. 41 FPS is still playable, mind you, but I definitely consider dropping the resolution farther down to like 720p for this title. And finally, here's Starfield, and I honestly didn't even want to show you this, but we just got to keep it real. With 1080p and low settings, with FSR 3.0 enabled, and a 50% resolution scale, we still only got 16 FPS. Just walking around the city, you can tell this is definitely not playable. The GPU is being blasted to 100% the entire time, and I think this is mostly just a VRAM limitation, because as we know, 3 gigabytes just doesn't get the job done in 2024 for some games. So yeah, here's the rest of the games, and this type of build with an 8600 and 1060 aren't gonna have a problem with the easy to run games like I showed you, but for the AAA super demanding and sometimes not optimized titles, it's gonna struggle a little bit, or a lot, like Starfield did. I definitely don't recommend spending only $150 on a PC in 2024 if you're looking to play those AAA games. If you just need something to play like Fortnite, Valorant, or CSGO, then this will definitely work. And if you rather play the more AAA demanding games, then you can still go down the OEM conversion route, but you'll just wanna spend more money on a better GPU. And if you need further help with choosing a GPU, planning a complete custom build, or even just following a build guide template, then don't forget about my zttbuildhelp.com. It's always linked down below. And if you just need a different example of converting an OEM office PC into a more capable gaming PC with a better graphics card, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now.